everyone. Today we're going to talk about Rose's Law. For those of you who don't know anything about Rose's Law, uh, it was signed into law by President Obama in 2010. And it's about um, stricken the word mental retardation from all federal language and education. My name's Sherry Macantonio. I'm the founder of BBOD. And this is my friend. Friend? Yeah. Friend. Colleague. <laughs> oh, and there comes Nate. This is my son picture. Nathan. This is my son Nathan who has Down syndrome. That guy. <laughs> Roberta's a special ed teacher. I'll let I, you introduce yourself. I am. I'm Roberta Curry. I'm a longtime special ed teacher. Um, I, right now I teach preschool in the integrated setting. So um, this type of language is very important to me and I have not seen it in education since way before 2010. Except when I was doing my, my teacher training, this is how old I am. I have this lovely relic. Um, the title of the book is Mental Retardation. And it's not what you think. The, um, the focus of this book was really defining, using mental, the word mental retardation as a, <clears throat> a qualifying condition or a clinical um, diagnosis. And it, it's very, very clearly defined as, as a sub-average sub-average intellect, at least uh, two standard deviations, uh, with deficits in adaptive behavior, which includes social skills and activities of daily living. So this is not an evil textbook. It's just an old textbook. And um, one of the things that I found super interesting was the focus on person-centered language within this text that uses, um, now a now legal term is its title, um, so Rose's Law in itself is focusing on that, that importance of person-centered language. We're going to use the terms that are more explicit and more telling than just that broad umbrella of mental retardation. And to give a little bit more background on Rose's Law, uh, what happened was a family in Maryland, um, their daughter was going to be labeled mental retarded. Uh, she also has Down syndrome like my, my son, but this mom, like me, didn't raise her other children uh, to use their words or to look at their sister that way. And um, this mom was a big advocate in um, getting this language stricken from the federal language and education, and kudos to her. I'd love to meet her, her someday. And Rosa, who's the girl that had Down syndrome, her 11-year-old brother at the time, he would be now probably in his 20s, uh, made one of the most fascinating statements um, in all the hearings and stuff that were going on. And I want to read this verbatim since his, it's his quote. His name is Nick, and that was Rose's brother. What you call people is how you treat them, Nick said. What you call my sister is how you will treat her. If you believe she is retarded, it invites taunting stigma, it invites bullying, and it also invites the slam doors of being treated with respect and dignity. I think those are profound words of her 11-year-old brother at the time. Um, what an amazing brother and advocate for his sister. I, I, you know, it's amazing that mom's doing a wonderful job. Um, Absolutely. He, he understands the importance of, of, of language and how it presents people. When you meet a person on paper, what, what you're going to do is you're going to see their qualifying condition first. They, they, these children are way more than that. These families are way more than a qualifying condition. So uh, the, the focus is to move forward beyond the label and, and get to know um, these families and these children as people first. Yeah. Um, so if you're, if you're reading through literature and you come across the term mental retardation, please notify your supervisors, your superiors, the people who have chosen that literature for you and let them know that it is now against the law to be using it in, in any kind of setting. Now, and also, you know, Special Olympics is also, and this is a Special Olympics article, and I will, um, you know, link it in the description of our video so you can read the whole article for yourself. But I'm sure you've heard of the Auburn campaign through Special Olympics. Um, and also, um, there was a youth group that's led Spread the Word to End the Word. Uh, about the R word. Um, so it's amazing um, the things that Special Olympics has done. And, and that was all from their athletes coming to them, um, 
you know, feeling uncomfortable with that word and being labeled that way. And, you know, Special Olympics has done wonderful things for the special needs community. Can't say enough things about them. And just a few little stats. You know, 92% of young people ages 8 to 18 report having heard the R, R word used. While 36% have heard the word used specifically towards someone with an intellectual disability. Um, you know, I have a son with intellectual disabilities. He has a big brother. Um, you know, that's not cool. Um, it's very upsetting to me. I even hear people at work use that term nonchalantly. They don't even think about it. But I try to use it as an educational moment um, and educate them. You know, I have a son with Down syndrome. If he was here, you know, that would be upsetting to him. And I try to explain it in those terms and in those regards. And my son, you know, that's a misnomer that everybody who has Down syndrome or anybody who has a disability has mental retardation. That is not true. Um, my son actually just made the honor roll at his school. Um, you know, so just because somebody has disabilities does not mean that they can't um, perform in school or do education. I'm sure Roberta can tell you that since, you know, she is. Well, worked. I think the bottom line and the focus of what we're trying to say is when you meet someone, remember that they're a person first with boundless uh, potential and opportunities. And if even if their pathway is different or or less smooth, please remember that they are a person first. They're a son. They're a brother. They're, they're somebody that is valuable and, and have limitless potential and just given the opportunity. Yeah. And also another statistic that shows that um, young people, when they're progressing from elementary school to middle school and high school, they're less likely to feel bad or sorry for a person being picked on. Um, and more likely to laugh, do nothing, or not care. And that may just be their developmental age. And I think that's something we all need to help our youth with in recognizing um, that if they were on the receiving end of that. And just pointing that out so they can see and put themselves in somebody else's shoes, you know, going forward in our lives and through society, you know. So if you like what we're sharing with you guys, and we will have more educational videos Roberta and I will uh, be putting out a lot more educational videos about people with disabilities and different aspects of their lives. And um, we thought it was great to start off with Rose's Law so everybody could uh, know about the language being stricken from the language. And, you know, people who have disabilities do not like to be referred to that. They have feelings, it's hurtful to them, and it's very important to be mindful of that. And, you know, if you don't understand why, more than happy to explain it further to you. So if you like our information, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our video, the bell notification, and click the subscribe button, and you'll be hearing more from Roberta and I. Thank you. Bye, everyone.